Hello everyone, this is Jotto, and welcome to another Deck Tech. Now, before we get started, I have messed with my microphone settings a little bit, because it's been a bit painful the last couple of videos. So, yeah, let me know how it is. If it's still a problem, I'll just get another microphone. But, uh, yeah, I do want to try out some setting adjustments first. So, anyway, uh, let me know. So, what am I doing in this episode? Well, we are doing Crazy Rage 2.0. Yep, we're back. Kind of funny, because this wasn't designed by Uska. This one was designed by Kerr, another one of my teammates. Yeah, so he did the majority of the work on it. Uh, I've changed some of the numbers, but the vast majority of the work on this list goes to him. So anyway, how's the deck? Well, I got rank 1 with it yesterday, and I got rank 2 with it, and then I decided to try some other stuff. Dropped all the way down to 26, and then climbed back up to rank 1 with the deck. So, yeah, the deck is very, very good, and it's sort of where you want to be right now in terms of rage. Crazy Rage may actually become standard rage now, which is really confusing. Uh, so, yeah, for those of you who don't know, I just call anything that doesn't have Burning Rage, Crazy Rage, because basically it's the face, face, face version, as opposed to the, like, uh, value burn type version that Burning Rage allows you to do. So, why am I on the Crazy Rage as a ladder deck? Because I've always said before that this kind of rage was a conquest deck and not a ladder deck. Which meant that like when I did the deck tech before, a lot of people were like, this doesn't really work on ladder. It's like doing okay, but it's not very good. But then, it was just the most played deck when it came to um, rage and conquest because it killed Wisdom Dominion Control. However, this version is actually strong enough against enough stuff that I think it's actually just the better form of Rage right now. Could be wrong, but at least at the moment it looks like it's the better form of Rage. The new set definitely added a lot to this kind of style of Red. So, first things first, let's talk about the one drops. Now, when it comes to the older cards, I won't be paying as much attention. I'll talk a bit about the newer cards uh, more later on. So, one drops. Standard 8, Lizard Barbarian, Goblin Warrior. Uh, Barbarian is far superior because it has 2 HP, which means it doesn't die to Fire Blast, uh, AoE, or Weakness Counters, which is big. And also doesn't die to Power Discharge, which is actually kind of relevant now. And so yeah, Lizard Barbarian, definitely the better 1-drop, but you want 8. So yeah, you do want your 8 1-drops, but the Barbarian is better. Now, random comment about Goblin Warrior. Because of the way this deck is structured... Goblin Warrior is the only creature in the whole deck that dies to Mutant. It's actually kind of insane. It's the only 1 HP creature in the whole deck. Which means that Mutant openings actually do have some problems against this kind of rage now. Uh, now, why am I so focused on high HP stuff? That's due to Blood Frenzy, which we'll get to. But anyway, so Goblin Warrior, only 1 HP creature in the deck, but you need your 8 1 drops. They all deal 2 damage. Good start. Now, I'll talk about the hero later, because I think I need to talk about the rest of the deck first. Now, onto the two drops. Now, we still have our Fireworker, three Fireworker, the, I think the original list had two or something. I can't remember the exact numbers, but anyway. So, three Fireworker, not running Fia anymore. Fia was the worst of the two, two drops, in Crazy Rage at least. Like, it was good against Red, and that's why you played it. It was very, very good in the Rage Mirror. And it was pretty good against stuff like Valusworn Incarnate. But you've got a lot of other ways of dealing spread damage now. And uh, ping based damage that isn't dependent on speed. And being able to get blockers through. So Fia just doesn't do enough now. And this deck does not play Massive Assault. Meaning that Fia's even worse. And it wasn't even that much of a uh, staple in this deck before. It was only a 2 of. And I think I upgraded to 3 Fias eventually. Because of all the rage. But... At least in the original version, it was low on the fee accounts. But yeah, Fireworker, 2-2. Two, two. The uh, Artifact Destruction does come up occasionally. It actually comes up very, very little in Crazy Rage. I actually did talk about this a bit where, like, uh, I can't remember who, but someone... Last time I did a, a deck tech on Crazy Rage, uh, someone had a go at me for saying, it's like, stop underestimating Fireworker, you always do this. Yeah, the second ability is very, very good. It just never comes up in this deck. <laughs> <laughs> I'll put it that way, it just never comes up in this deck. The reason for it is because having Artifact Destruction on a 2-drop is amazing if you're playing grindy games. The only time that I sacrifice Fireworker in this particular deck 
is against um, one turn heal probably playing uh, reactor. That's about it. The reason for it is because you don't want to kill portal because it kills them, and you don't want to uh, kill lamps because they come down so late the game's usually over, and if they've got a lamp down, well, they've won anyway. So yeah, artifact destruction doesn't really come up, but it's there. It can be useful. But in general, 2 HP is the benchmark, 2-2, two, 2 two speed, and that's actually a very, very uh, a good benchmark in this deck, and it's even better now because of Blood Frenzy. Tortured Orc. This guy's insane. 2-3, uh, two, 2 speed, the slave does come up. The other ability almost never does, but the slave does come up. Now, having two of these in play can be awkward, but he's so powerful. 2-3 on turn 2 is insane. It basically takes out a uh, zombie legionnaire for free. It takes out all 1 drops for free. It takes out some 2 drops for free. It's just an incredibly powerful beater in the early game. It also allows you to... <clears throat> It also allows you to fight on a front row a lot more easily now against the more mid-rangey decks. Like, Mutant against an Orc it doesn't really work. Uh, they don't get any kills, and then they have a 2-2, and 2-2s are very, very easy to kill. So yeah, the Tortured Orc is incredibly good in the early game, and that is why he's definitely a 4 of. The Slave is a bit of a drawback, it basically makes him legendary <laughs> in some cases, but you really, really want this guy on turn 2. Lizard, Tortured Orc, is just a ton of stats to have on turn two so yeah the slave does come up but not that much there's also some swift in this deck so even if they kill your other um other creatures you can display a swift creature and get more and more damage in anyway and the slave usually doesn't come up unless you have two in play so yeah very very powerful guy sort of just a vanilla creature but uh he's a bit like the red elite vanguard now i'll put it that way so anyway on to the three drops. This is where the stuff gets really strange. Raki Berserker. Yes, I'm actually playing this guy. Two, three, one speed, swift. Whenever he gets damage for the first time, you put a might emblem on him, and he gets plus one speed if he has a might emblem on him. Now, Krur actually nicknamed this guy the Zombie Eater, which is fairly accurate, actually. It basically allows you to uh, annihilate zombie decks now. Because you've got, like, Raki Berserker can actually start, um, sorry, throat's a bit strange today, but anyway, um, Raki Berserker can actually start contesting a lot of their big stuff, like Insatiable Ghoul, and also the new 3-3, three, three, uh, is it Abhorrent Ghoul? I think so, yeah. Still getting used to the names, but yeah, I think it's Abhorrent Ghoul. Also just kills Legionnaire for free, and doesn't die to fumes. Like, this guy is very, very good. And once you get an attack off with him, once he's damaged, he doesn't even die to consume, because consume usually deals 3 damage. So the Raki Berserker is a very, very good creature in this current metagame. He's also a pain in the neck for rage. Like, a real pain in the neck for rage. Because if you get Raki Berserker, Blood Frenzy, that's the combo, you get to deal some damage to their board, and then you get a 3-3 three, three with Swift, and then at the end of the turn, it becomes a 3-4. Also known as that magic stat number that just is so irritating. It's the reason Insatiable Ghoul was so good, even though it had a drawback, essentially. It's just 3-4 stats are so incredibly awkward to deal with. It doesn't die to assassinate, consume, fireball, word of fire, nothing. It just doesn't really die outside of combat. So yeah, 3-4 stats, very, very good. I was kind of surprised with how good this guy was. I figured he was kind of maybe playable when I had the set review on him, but he is actually very, very powerful. So 4 of. Flame Rune Warrior. This one is the surprising one. This, a lot of people are like, wait, what? Really? Well, yeah, so he was buffed in the last patch, so his secondary effect happens at the end of turn, not start. As it turns out, that is an insane difference. Now, he does have a bit of an awkward moment where you have to use the uh, emblem. Which means that if you're really far ahead, he's not actually that good because you have to put it on your own guy. Although, if you put it on your Berserker, then end of turn he actually grows. So yeah, Flame Room Warrior does have a little bit of utility there. But in general, he's basically the substitution for Fia. Serves the same role, and the problem playing Gibber and Ronnie is that you're trying to stop the AoE from affecting you as badly, and also you can't use Blood Frenzy with Gibber and Ronnie at all, so it gets a bit awkward. 
Uh, Flamer Warrior also has some really strange stuff that starts happening when you draw them in multiples. Where you can play a Flamer Warrior, kill something, next turn play another one, deal two damage to something else because they both trigger, and then if you have a third one you start dealing three damage and it means that against the more mid-rangey decks you can actually just power through a lot of, in a lot of cases. Also works really really well with basic Zash because it happens in a turn so you can play your Flame Room Warrior, stop this guy from walking, get some damage in and then the Warrior will kill at end of turn. So yeah, this sort of substitutes as the Fia in this deck, but 3-2 uh, stats aren't too bad. It's a bit awkward, but it's not too bad considering uh, a lot of your other stuff needs to have stuff like Fumes to get rid of it anyway. So anyway, that is the early creature base. I know Flame Serpent is a creature, but I usually count it as a burn spell. So let's get on to the spells. Well, we got the new one, Blood Frenzy. Yes, Blood Frenzy. Now, it was 2 mana. It was buffed. I think the buff was warranted. Um, it's not the best card in the deck, but it's definitely good now. But yeah, at 2 mana, it was just unplayable. At 1 mana, it's actually really, really nice. And it's kind of funny, because you can tell Blood Frenzy was designed to be used with Forced Labor. And I'm not playing Forced Labor. <laughs> yeah, it's a bit gimmicky, basically. Forced Labor, Blood Frenzy is kind of gimmicky. There was like one Forced Labor in the deck, and it still didn't work. <laughs> So, yeah, took out the Force Labor. It was just too gimmicky to get it to work with Blood Frenzy. But um, Blood Frenzy in general generally reads one mana, deal two damage, or deal three. It also works really, really well with Berserker, triggering it. And it allows you to absolutely annihilate uh, Library Guard's openings and just a lot of the defensive openings out of Wisdom Dominion because you can go... Like, Lizard, Fireworker, and then, like, Tortured Orc, Blood Frenzy, killing their Library Guards for free, basically, for one mana. Like, you add to the board and still get damage in. So, it's an incredible tempo play. And the only creature that dies to Blood Frenzy in this entire deck is the Goblin Warrior. So, as a result, there's not really much of a drawback to this thing. Although, it does come up occasionally, and it is problematic as a removal spell a lot of the time. This is a tempo card more than anything else. Because distribution, once they have a lot of cards in play, does basically nothing. But, that's not what you're using it for. You're using it as a tempo gain, so you're always ahead on board. And, because it only costs one mana, you can actually afford to use it as a tempo card, unlike stuff like Our Barrage, which costs three, which is usually your entire turn if you're using it as a tempo card. So it's definitely a very, very good tempo generator. Word of Fire, three Word of Fire, mostly just because you have some issues fitting everything into the deck and you want a really high creature count. But Word of Fire, it's always going to be good, unless they make a mistake. It's always going to be good. It uh, usually deals... 2 damage in this deck, sometimes 3. This deck tends to stay level 1 a lot of the time, but Word of Fire still allows you to get rid of some early stuff, and along with Blood Frenzy, you can usually Blood Frenzy and then Word of Fire to mess up whatever damage distribution they did. So it is very, very useful there. It's just efficient, but because you don't go up early levels that much, it weakens the card a bit, so it's only at 3. Fireball. Reliable. Burn spell, 3 mana, 3 damage is pretty standard at this point. Being instant is very, very handy. It allows you to go Fireball end of turn into Dragonfire or Flame Serpent. I've talked about Fireball a lot in the past. Very, very good burn spell. Uh, only 2 Fire Blast. A couple reasons for this. Blood Frenzy sort of substitutes Fire Blast sometimes. And it works better with stuff like Berserker. But the original deck had 4 Frenzy, 1 Fire Blast, and I switched it up a bit because Frenzy in multiples does basically nothing. And I also wanted 6 uh, ways of directly killing 3 HP creatures, like Library Guards, so that you always have a way to kill them, uh, regardless of your opening. So I went up to the double Fire Blast, and I've really been liking it. It also allows you to deal with Soldiers, which can actually be a little bit of a problem in the early game. But if you draw a Fire Blast, you automatically win the game. It's actually kind of funny how that uh, matchup works. So yeah, if you get your Fire Blast, you're winning against Soldiers, and it's just a decent spell overall. It's not as good as it is in like Burning Rage, for instance, because you're playing a faster game. But in general, it's still your AoE. 
It's basically a couple extra copies of Fireball. Can't go face, but it's a bit better in other situations. So, Fire Blast, the, uh, the old reliable AoE. And now, onto the Burn Suite. Now, I'm running 3 Dragonfire, 4 Serpent. The reason I'm running 4 Serpent over 4 Dragonfire is actually quite simple. It works very, very well with basic Zash, being able to stop a blocker, and it means you can stay 2 levels for longer. That's basically why I'm doing it. Also, because you're trying to drive tempo, you often want to use Flame Serpent to deal like 3 damage to them and also as a removal spell, just to keep your velocity up. So, in general, it has a little bit more utility than Dragonfire and is also easier to play. So, that's why I am playing the 4 Flame Serpent. Although, you do have to be a little bit intelligent when you use Flame Serpent sometimes. Like, you don't want to play it into like a Pacify or Fireball. Like, you can often trick people into using their fireball, or just wait until they leave the shields down, because they have to go all in to race, and then you just play your flame serpent, and then you're good. Because remember, if they hold up fireball, they can fireball you, and then they don't have it. But if they hold up fireball, and you got flame serpent, and you just play something else, and then they hold the fireball, because they're like, well, I can't uh, let them get a flame serpent, and they hold it for two turns, they're actually behind six mana at that point, so they have to use it eventually, or they're just going to die. So yeah, Flame Serpent definitely uh, leads to some bluff-based matchup sometimes. But um, in general, if you play the card right, it's usually 5 damage. Or sometimes it's better than that because you get to use it as a removal spell as well as face. Now, the Dragon Vire. This, I don't think I've ever used it as a removal spell on this deck. I have used a lot of Dragon Fires as removal spells before. Never done it with this one. <laughs> I have yet to use Dragonfire on a creature, and I've played maybe 40 games with this deck, so it just doesn't happen. So yeah, Flame Serpent means that your Dragonfires can go face, and the only reason you go 3 levels is for that 5 damage consistency, and it just helps get past blockers. That's why Dragonfire is in the deck, it deals a quarter of their life total, and 4 Flame Serpent and 3 Dragonfire allows you to burn people out from 13 regularly, and I've even burnt people out from 15 with some hands. So in general, this kind of um, amount of burn in the deck, I mean, you've got four Fireball, four Serpent, and then f uh, three Dragonfire just allows you to deal a lot of damage from hand, and it makes it very, very difficult to actually stabilize, which is the reason the deck is so good. Now, as for Shrines, 18 basics. Yes, I love playing decks like this. Now, there was no joke. There was actually some talk about playing Fire God Temple, and it was kind of okay. Not in uh, my particular version because I'm not playing a longer game. Like the original deck had Aralak in it. But instead of playing a more mid rangey focus, because a lot of uh, the ladder now is just control and aggro, I kind of wanted the more aggressive approach so that I could get under the control decks and then punish uh, any slow starts. But if there's a lot of mid range, Aralak is where you want to go. And there was actually. Uh, I think it was Cloud that was um, testing Gruels, which was actually kind of okay. Again, though, that feels like a mid rangey type uh, counter, and there aren't a lot of mid rangey decks right now. Now, before I move on to the actual game, let's talk about some of the cards that didn't quite make the cut. So, already talked about Fia being a bit awkward. The other one's Anarchist, not Arsonist, as I've called it constantly through my set review. So, what's the problem with Anarchist? Well, he does 3 damage. The problem is that he makes Blood Frenzy really bad because you have to distribute damage, which means that if you Blood Frenzy to get rid of a blocker, you can't actually attack with the Anarchist, which is really, really awkward uh, without killing your own guys because you put too much damage on your own side at that point. And on top of that, if you have Lizard, Anarchist, and then you have to play like a Tortured Orc or something just to attack with the Anarchist, otherwise you're going to lose your uh, Lizard and then they assassinate your Tortured Orc, you lose your Lizard anyway. So the amount of risk required to get one extra damage over Fireworker was just not worth it and that's why I cut uh, the Anarchist. I've actually kind of cut him a lot in general, like I tried him in a more like uh, Forced Labor type deck because you have a lot of HP in play, and even then, he was kind of awkward. Uh, it's just, even if you're playing a lot of HP in play, he makes trading basically impossible, 
because as soon as you trade, there's more damage on your board. So the Anarchist trigger kills whatever's left. So it turns your good attacks into trades, which is not something you want. And even if the Anarchist dies in combat, he still triggers. So, yeah, I'm not playing the Anarchist for that reason. Now, out of the rest of the stuff, uh, Gibber and Ronnie already talked about, uh, mostly has to do with weakness counters, and also Blood Frenzy, although the card is still good, just not quite in this deck. Uh, Car, Car is quite nice, but he's not that quick. Like, Raki Berserker deals more damage, and in general is just a better aggro card than Car, who is more of a mid rangey type card. Uh, Massive Assault, you don't really have a support for anymore, and you got enough damage in the deck that you just don't need Massive Assault. Uh, Ogre Captive, without Gibber and Ronnie, gets a bit awkward. Again, that's more of like a uh, Dominion Splash card. And the last one is Aerolac. Now, Aerolac, as I mentioned, is more of a mid-range killer. He's very, very difficult to deal with for some mid-range decks. He's very good against order. But um, I went a bit more smorky, basically, to deal with the control decks, so that's why I cut Aerolac. So anyway, let's see if we can find a ranked game. So yeah, the deck overall has been doing very, very well, and I ended up playing it in the Golden Ticket Tournament yesterday, and I thought it was decent. Now, Kruer ended up winning the ticket, and he was playing the deck as well. I think he was playing one or two numbers differently, but uh, he was playing the deck as well, and it seemed to work out for him. And the reason I lost my match there actually wasn't to do with Rage, really, so... I think, yeah, the match I lost, it was banned. So, yeah, overall, I'm quite happy with the deck. It has performed very, very well on ladder and also in uh, tournaments. So, uh, we'll see how the build goes from here. But in terms of a just all-round rage deck, this is probably where you want to be. Difficult to tell, but this is probably where you want to be. It's also a bit of a trend for me to release a rage deck tech after every single patch. <laughs> I've kind of done this over and over and over again. Like, we had the um, the Burning Rage change, and the first deck deck I did after that was Dragon Slammer. <laughs> so, yeah, I've just kind of done this a lot. Now, I've got Double One Drop, uh, Blood Frenzy. I'm probably against Wisdom Dominion, hard to tell. I'll keep this, because it's got two Lizard Barbarians. I don't have a turn two play, which is a little awkward, but in general, this is good. This is now extremely good. Now, I think what I actually want to do here is just play the single Lizard Barbarian, and then next turn I can go for a Raki Berserker. And then I can go Lizard Barbarian and Blood Frenzy to deal with whatever he plays. Now, that was weak to assassinate, but in general, I think it's the better play, and I just made a mistake there. Should have played the Raki Berserker. Yeah, that was a mistake. It's turn two, and I'm just... Yeah. That's so stupid. But anyway, um... I have to play around Mutant. That's really dumb. If I lose this game because of two damage, it's entirely because of that. So, yes. Mm-hmm. Alright, so if he plays Library Guards here, I can just kill it. I've got Blood Frenzy and um, Lizard plus Goblin, so that's an entire turn. Hmm. Interesting. Alright, so we're just going to Blood Frenzy the 2-3 then. Plays around some minor stuff like uh, Flash Freeze. There's no reason to over damage your board if you don't need to. Now, there's some potential for Ramp Cataclysm, and also I don't really want to play into Mutant, so I won't. Well, it's not enough for Cataclysm yet. That's next turn. <laughs> Another Disquisitive. Alright, so draw again. Where to fire? That's perfect. I could play Flame Rune and use the uh, Comp Block on the Zash. 
which just occurred to me I didn't really talk about the uh, hero choice. But anyway, so basically the reason I'm playing uh, Basic Zash over Burke, those are the two that uh, come up. Burke allows you to deal with stuff like Library Guards and Jin a little bit more easily, but he does have a few problems with him. Uh, the main ones being he doesn't allow you to push damage with Flame Serpent, which can actually be a problem. Now, this is where I lose the game because I didn't actually push two damage early. <laughs> I mean, I said it at the beginning. I missed two damage. He should be at four. So if I lose the game because I, ca I can't kill him and he's at like one, then yeah, it's just entirely my fault and not the deck. So yes, if I lose this game and he goes down to one HP, note... It's not the uh, not the deck's fault. It's mine. But anyway, there's actually been a lot of um, balanced discussion recently, and it's an interesting topic because a lot of the um, like a lot of the meta game has just been control and rush recently. Now I'm actually going to go for a dragon fire here. Yeah, I would have actually killed him. Okay, we can still win this game from here, but I should have won this game. So yeah, for the record, the deck would have won this game. But I'm just, yeah, I'm just stupid. But anyway, so there's been a lot of discussion recently about um, the fact that it seems like the entire game right now is kind of boiled down to Rush and Cataclysm. And it's like, pick your poison. Do you want to die to Rush or Cataclysm? And there's like no middle ground. Which I think is a kind of valid right now. Um... It's a bit of a valid complaint. Like, there have been quite a few problems. I'm not really sure why he took a card there. I think, if you're going to take anything, it should have been Fire Blast, maybe. Is he hoping I miss Divine? Or just not taking anything? Unless he has Silence, sorry, win the game. If he has Silence or Vampirism, I'm dead. But if he doesn't have, yeah, just win. So even with my misplay, I won the game. <laughs> oh, that was terrible. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> Almost. Well, my punishment for misplaying that was I only got like nine points, so I didn't quite get rank one again. Yeah, Usko took it off me again. Uh, but I did have rank one yesterday, but uh, Usko took it off me again. So anyway, that's a basic rundown of the deck. Wisdom Dominion in general is quite a big force in the metagame right now, which is one of the reasons why I like playing this form of Rage so much, because it punishes Wisdom Dominion. Now, as far as ladder goes, it depends on how matchups go from here, but right now it's so in flux that a deck like this that just punishes early stumbles, which is what a lot of these like weird deck ideas actually do suffer from, just works. The other way of punishing these like weird decks is uh, with Wizen Dominion because if they don't have a stable game plan for beating control or a good early game, then you're just gonna beat them every single time with um, like Cataclysm, Karthus, and such. So, yeah, those are the two ways of approaching a meta game that's a bit in flux. And for now, those two strategies work the best on Laderite. Uh, well, at the moment, basically. But, in the future, no idea. Depends on where the metagame goes. It's very, very difficult to tell. And, honestly, we'll have to see... It's mostly Ladder that's going to get changed. Because I think Conquest is probably going to be um, Rage, Wisdom Dominion, and then something else. And then a Wisdom Dominion Trap again, probably. It's difficult to tell. But, uh, it depends on what other decks surface. We've seen this before, where some decks surface like, in the last week. And they affect the metagame. And uh, there hasn't been that much exploration done into new stuff yet. So, we shall see. But anyway, that's a basic rundown of the deck. So, if you like the content, please subscribe. If you have any feedback, put it in the comment section below. If you want to ask me any questions about some of the card choices, especially some of the weirder ones, then put it in the comment section below. If you want to support the channel directly, there is a link to my Patreon in the description, along with a 75,000 gold code for new players. That gives you the Disquisitive Spirit card back. But as for now, it's Benjotto, signing off.